Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Melanie with Hole Again 1111. I am super excited to do this video for you. Um, first of all, let me just tell you that when I first started my twin flame journey or became aware of my twin flame journey, I should say, I didn't just, just start it. When I became aware of it and I was guided to YouTube to watch readings on the twin flame journey to try to understand what was happening in my own life, with signs and synchronicities, with the dreams and the visions, the feeling, the energy of my uh, perceived divine masculine and, and all of that, <clears throat> I was guided to YouTube to watch several different readers. And one of the very first readers, I'm taking some coffee, mm, that I came across and that I really truly loved her energy, her spirit. Uh, I love the way she delivered her messages and more so than anything, I loved her creativity, and um, that's Sherry at NFGC Tarot, uh, which is No Fucks Given Crew, <laughs> which I loved her name of her channel. I just loved her rebellious nature, and then I learned that she had created, she had painted her own cards, that it was her own artistry, her own gifts that had lent itself to the cards she was using and her creative spirit uh, to connect with her own twin flame journey and deliver messages to the community. Well, lo and behold, Sherry finally released her decks, and I am so excited to be sharing it with you. I have my very own deck, and I'm getting used to them, but I'm gonna do a quick reading for you, and we'll see what comes out. So I might stumble a little bit. I'll intuitively read them. She sent me a little guide that goes along with the cards, but I'm not gonna use it. I'll channel intuitively, but bear with me because it's my first time ever using this deck. They're um, available for sale. I'm going to put the link in the comments section below the video as well as in the video summary section. It's a beautiful way to support a divine feminine in the community that has stepped fully into service and created a product for us to use in our own journeys and really generated from her gifts, her talents as an artist. These are all her designs, her um, her creations, and they're just lovely and powerful, powerful images. So go give her some love on her channel, Sherry at No Fucks Given Crew, NFGC. And, um, and honestly, I don't have my phone in front of me, so I'll put a link to her YouTube channel as well. I think it's uh, NFGC Tarot or just NFGC, No Fucks Given Crew. Um, I'm shuffling for the very first time since I received her deck. So Sherry, shout out to you. So much love to you. Congratulations on finally distributing and um, sharing your tarot deck with the world, with the community. And I uh, just want to let you know that Sherry, I have several different House of Intuition candles with different intentions uh, with each of them. And today when I was getting ready to use your deck, and this is the box that came along with it, by the way. Um, when I was guided to, to use your deck for the first time today, I pulled the success candle. I just want to wish you congratulations on the success of putting yourself out there, sharing your gifts and your art for serving the community. And I wish you so much success moving forward with the impact that your tarot deck is going to have on the community. All right, so... I think I've shuffled pretty well here. I love the fact that this is, you know, it follows the traditional tarot, but it has different um, words on each card or different, you know, meanings. Same concept, just labeled differently. And also, Sherry included a couple extra cards, which are the seven chakras, as well as an 1111 card. So that was really significant. And I loved it seeing that on here, right? We all love that 1111. So let's see what happens so spirit source angels please bless my new deck nfgc tarot please shield it with golden and white light for all of the energy that i'd like to protect for the readings that i do for myself and for others please only bring forth messages for the highest and greatest good for all that i read for including myself and please continue to uh, channel through me as a clear channel for those who are viewing my readings. Thank you, Spirit, and so it is. So let's get started. I'm going to do a Twin Flame reading. If you're not a Twin Flame or you don't know if you're a Twin Flame, you can look at this as a Soul Connection reading 
however it resonates with you. So we're going to zero point the fool. Lovely start to the reading. I'm going to do an energy reading. So let's get three cards in the bottom of the deck will be the overall theme and then we'll get some clarifies. I'm only using Sherry's deck for this reading, okay? So we'll get some messages, some various messages from her. So zero point is the fool. It's a new beginning, no baggage, an opportunity to follow a new direction, an adventure. See this person with a backpack and the arrow pointing a certain direction. The sun is shining. It's really about clearing the slate. It's a clean slate. No baggage. You've sort of gone through different journeys in your life and you've returned to that place where you can start over or start something new. Take a leap of faith, a new adventure. This is a twin flame reading, so this could be an opportunity for both the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine to come together with a fresh new beginning at the zero point where both of them have really worked hard to heal, evolve, grow, transform, where both have faced their wounding and their um, karma and are starting fresh with their new lessons to be able to bless their connection with a healthy, functional energy with a desire to leave the past behind. So then we have the rock star here. And um, isn't that just amazing? So the rock star in this deck would be the six of wands. And the six of wands, I think it's the six of wands. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the six of wands. Um, the six of wands is... You know, a card of, in the traditional tarot, success, rec public recognition of, yeah, this is definitely the Six of Wands. So you can see here, this the rock star, this is about stepping into your power, um, really enjoying the fruits of the hard work and the challenges and the battles you've overcome. I love that the zero point and the rock star came out first in this reading. I'm staring at the bottom of this deck. I have to show you guys spiritual union two of cups. Okay. So I feel like, I feel like it's staring at me as I'm talking to you. So I feel like it's part of this reading. So I'm going to take it, but, um, you know, the rock star is really about, uh, public recognition awards, but also victory, overcoming defeat, making it through the journey and really reaping the, the benefits of the work that's been done. It's also about shining your light, stepping into your power, being seen for the work and the um, embodiment of who you are today. And it's been propelled by this spiritual union, the energy of the two of cups, of the two souls working together to harmonize their energy and to connect at that kundalini sacred sexuality uh, energy and to be able to propel this connection forward to a whole new beginning, working together in both of your light, the darkness having been integrated so that both of you can shine in your wholeness individually, but also as a team, as a partnership. Um, you know, somebody mentioned this to me the other day, and I feel like it's a good time to clarify it. I'll probably mention it in a future video. You know, I have always known or have learned throughout this journey that um, you can have a kundalini activation with anybody, not just your twin flame or spiritual partner. You can have it with a yoga teacher or somebody you're doing healing work with or somebody can, you know, be a catalyst to that activation within you as well. It opens up your heart chakra. It can make you feel sexual and creative and it can move energy through your system. And oftentimes that can be confused as a twin flame connection. Okay, so kundalini awakenings are different than activations. And so I'm not going to go into that in this reading, but I'm feeling drawn to share with you that there's a big difference between a kundalini awakening with your twin and an activation with anybody else. So being able to discern the difference and know what's, um, what is an activation to help you heal or to wake up as opposed to to merge with your divine partner is a really important key component. Oftentimes when, from, when a person, a soulmate, not a twin flame, a soulmate from a past life comes back into our energy, comes back into our awareness, Oftentimes they will trigger a kundalini activation as well. And so there's oftentimes confusion about who is this soul connection? What is our, uh, bi what, is, what binds us together? What's the binding agent? And so that's part of the awakening. That activation of kundalini brings that level of awareness of discerning what is this true connection? What does it mean? 
how is it supposed to impact me and and help me evolve and heal and grow so zero point spiritual union two of cups rock star six of wands it's a beautiful energy reading so far in regards to the work that has brought the connection to a place of possibly starting a whole new beginning with nothing holding you back in regards to building success together. The success candle was exactly the energy I was feeling before this reading. My intention was to share Sherry's success. That energy is coming through in this twin flame reading as well. Okay, so let's um, keep going. Let's get some energy for the divine masculine. Let's get some energy for the divine masculine. Yeah, nice. So, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so for the Divine Masculines right now, we have the Nine of Pentacles in this deck. It's Independence. I really feel like, okay, so let me tell you what came out here. Uh, we have the independence card, nine of pentacles. We have the free thinker, which is the page of pentacles. We have the vibe tribe, three of cups, and the yin card, the empress. You know, for the divine masculine and, you know, I can't make this stuff up. Underneath that, the four of wands in this deck, commitment. All right, so I really feel strongly that the divine masculines, First of all, there's a, there's several messages that I'm channeling with this this deck. I feel like the divine masculines have really channeled their divine feminine energy with the feminine energy within them, really connecting emotionally to themselves and also realizing the vibe tribe that they're part of a bigger picture here, a bigger movement, the twin flame movement, the community. Um, they're, they're feeling really positive and good and excited about the work that they've been doing on themselves. It's really created this feeling of independence from whatever was holding them back before they reached this zero point, before they were able to step into their courage, their power, this success to overcome the battles and reach victory instead of defeat to really see this spiritual union, two of cups for what it really is, which is true divine love, something that has been fueling them from a life force energy perspective and sacred sexuality to gain their independence, to stand in their power, to think freely, page of pentacles, to have a whole new opportunity to create a new life, a new beginning, a new foundation that represents their truth, who they really are, independence, freedom. I love the flip-flops like freedom, flow, casualness, like really easing into the belief systems about how they can live and show up in the real world. This is a pentacles card, free thinker, independence. So we've got page of pentacles, nine of pentacles, the empress, a really beautiful, abundant time for them to manifest uh, what they want in regards to who they are connected to, vibe tribe really surrounding themselves with people that make them feel good, yin, nurturing, empathetic, understanding, and also people they can be abundant with, including wanting this new beginning most likely with the divine feminine, right? Empress and spiritual union, really thinking a lot, free thinker, page of pentacles, thinking a lot about how they maybe want to approach the divine feminine about commitment, four of wands. Now, I just had this conversation last night with another divine feminine who I love, love, love. I won't say your name because I don't want to divulge that you're the one I talked to, but she's fabulous and she has her own channel. And um, and it's not Angela from Mystic Moon, even though I love her and she's fabulous. It's not her because a lot of you are going to go, oh, Angela, Mystic Moon, it's not her. Um, but what I want to tell you here is on the divine masculine's mind is the divine feminine. And there is a strong energy here. This is very strong energy that they want to have some kind of commitment for a wands with the divine feminine. And the conversation I just alluded to was what does commitment really look like to different divine masculines and divine feminines? It can be defined in numerous ways. Sometimes commitment just simply means 
uh, a friendship. Sometimes it means marriage. Sometimes it means life partnership without a legal contract. It means different things for different people. So on the divine masculine's mind is, I want to be connected in the physical realm with the divine feminine, yin, because we're part of the same com community. We're part of this, we're aligned vibrationally, vibe tribe. We lift each other up and we push each other forward because of this spiritual union towards success and victory, courage and confidence, public recognition of the journey that we're both on. But how do I navigate or negotiate this commitment and still retain my independence, my self-sufficiency, my freedom, and be a free thinker in the way that we negotiate this commitment? And will the divine feminine play? Will she align herself vibrationally, energetically with this spiritual union in a way that works for both of us, agreements, as opposed to uh, what might have been presented in the past that wasn't resonating or aligned or felt constricting or like your freedom was being taken away. I'm sort of channeling for the divine masculine. Free thinker, commitment, independence, vibe, tribe, yin. Definitely feeling very, very connected to the divine feminine. Wanting to be together in a, this spiritual union with a fresh new start, no baggage and have success. But wanting to retain freedom and look at this commitment in a way that might need to be negotiated in an agreement that works for both of you, depending on how, what's happened in your past and how you feel when you're together. Uh, you know, if you're introverted and you need your own space, uh, maybe you need to negotiate living conditions, cohabitation, or having separate spaces. You might, you know, uh, be in a situation where you'd never want to get married again. So will this person be a life partner without a legal commitment? Whatever the case may be. All I can tell you from this energy is four of wands, page of pentacles, three of cups, nine of pentacles, the empress, the divine masculine is feeling the divine feminine big time, really desiring her and wanting to come forward and have some kind of a uh, connection with some kind of commitment while still retaining some semblance of independence and free thinking. Uh, really feeling like they don't want to give away their power or feel trapped like they may have been in the past. They recognize that this is a spiritual union, a different kind of connection. And because of that, it's propelled them to want to possibly take a leap of faith in this connection towards something that could be successful. But it's going to take some work on both sides. And I know what you're going to say in the comment section. He wants to go fuck around with other people and still be with me. I didn't say that. I didn't talk about that. If you both decide on polyamory or poly being um, poly polygamous, that's an agreement or commitment you make. No judgment here. If you can't live with that, if that's not what you want, don't do it. I didn't say this vibe tribe was a bunch of women. I said this was a community they felt connected to because of similar vibration or alignment. So... Um, I'm saying that because I get these comments sometimes and I'm like, dude, where did you even pick that up from? That's your own perspective or you read into what I was channeling and that's okay. Everybody, you have to discern what works for you, what resonates, leave the rest. But what I'm saying here is everybody's situation is going to be different and it's going, you're going to need to discern what spiritual union in the physical, if you're able to ground this spiritual union in the physical if you ground this two of cups in the physical, which I feel like there's an opportunity to do here with this four of wands coming out here, commitment, uh, it's going to look different than maybe how a traditional relationship in the physical would normally look. It's going to have a spiritual component. It's going to have a need to be free and independent, liberated. There's going to be a need to work together to keep both of your vibrations high and have your own uh, individuality and selfhood in order to navigate the sh the light that both of you shine so brightly. Twin flames have, um, I'm not trying to categorize them as better than anyone else, but we have spiritual gifts, psychic gifts, we have creative gifts, we have uh, high levels of intelligence and connection. Oftentimes at, at much more open or higher states than a lot of other people who may not be as awake or as conscious, 
when you get to that zero point after you've done the healing, the awakening, the evolution, getting to that state of consciousness. So how do you balance both lights shining so brightly, both of you being rock stars, if that's what you want, um, and in this connection where each of you has your own individuality, your own selfhood, your freedom, your independence, the ability to be a free thinker while still being in commitment in this nurturing, loving, very abundant connection that's going to manifest success and possibly public recognition and attention. So being in the spotlight. So coming to agreements about this spiritual union and grounding it zero point in the 3D is really important is really important. Let's see what's, I'm going to put these um, cards back to see if there's any mirroring for the divine feminine. Okay. I'm keeping those out because I feel like that's the core of the reading there. Zero point, the fool, two of cups and the rock star. Lots of energy there of working through the various dynamics that have kept you in separation to finally come together <clears throat> in physical a whole new beginning with a different perspective and outlook about what can be what's possible all right so let's get some divine feminine energy here what's going on with the divine feminine free spirits so we had free thinker for the divine masculine page of pentacles and we have the free uh free spirit page of wands for the divine feminine so feeling really free as well really wanting to express yourselves um expand yourself into again okay we have mirroring the divine feminine shows up on the divine feminine side mental prison eight of swords okay so let's see what's going on there let's get another couple cards here um yeah Happily ever after. Yes. Ten of cups and the chariot. Okay. Bottom of the deck. Patience. Oh, Lord have mercy. Sherry, really? <laughs> I didn't see this card, right? So of course it came up on the divine feminine's energy. Of course it did. This is the temperance card. I'm just teasing. Um, this is the temperance card. Patience. So ultimately the divine feminines have been working on their own life. Page of wands moving forward in a free spirited way, doing things, moving forward, the chariot, doing things that are, uh, feel meaningful, uh, spiritual connected, connected to themselves while they've been tempering, while they've been getting into balance themselves and also working energetically to get to the zero point with the divine masculines because of the spiritual union. Okay. Uh, the patience card here, let's see the angel, the feminine angel looking up to the sky here. Beautiful. There's been this opportunity to work on creating your own happiness and building a foundation, 10 of cups, happily ever after in the divine feminine's own life because she's the divine feminine. Yin, she's tapped into her feminine energy of manifestation and abundance to be able to move forward in this page of wands energy with life force energy towards things that were inspiring and motivating, uh, ambitious and creative things that lit her up or light you up. Divine feminine is trying to manifest and create her own happily ever after, uh, as she sort of waits or tempers, uh, herself and her life to, um, I really feel like the energy here is a huge focus on self and your own energy and your ability to manifest your own happiness to try to break free from this mental prison that has existed in this dynamic, in this connection, uh, dark nights of the soul, purging, feeling like you don't have control, not having communication. So there is an energy here for some divine feminines where you're still trapped in this mental prison, feeling like you're never going to have this happily ever after. And spirit is saying you need to have patience. You're losing your patience. And to really focus on yourself, yin, divine feminine energy, be in your power, be nurturing to yourself and empathetic for what you're going through. Also focus on rekindling that vitality within you and your life force energy to manifest um, a positive outcomes in your own life to propel you forward spiritually and physically towards things that feel uh, light, enlightening, contentment, peace, connectedness that kind of thing. I do feel like 
I do feel like we want to get a card here. I'd like to just get a little bit more clarification on this mental prison for whoever this is here. Clarification for the mental prison. I, you know, of course I feel like a lot of divine feminines want this happily ever after. They want this empress lifestyle. They want children maybe or to birth projects with the divine masculine books or, you know, you know, uh, businesses or services and they're working on themselves while they're having patience and moving forward on their own and thinking freely, free spirit, doing what they need to do so that they can break free from this mental prison that's kept them trapped and feeling sort of hopeless and helpless. You know, this these are masculine hands on this mental prison. So it's sort of like the, the masculine energy, the divine feminines have allowed the masculine energy to have a, a grip on their mental capacity, their their thoughts, obsessive compulsive thinking. Am I going to have this happily ever after? Am I going to be the queen to this king? Am I going to be able to move this forward, you know, and have the outcome? Temperance is patience, but it's also in the twin flame community, oftentimes a union card. Am I going to be able to have this union? Temperance is also a card of divine timing. So um, there's a lot of different scenarios that could happen here. Take what works for you, leave the rest. Let's get some clarification for this mental prison. Retirement, 10 of pentacles. Okay. Hmm. So it feels to me, look how lovely, the, look at the beautiful images on these cards. Um, so it feels to me like a lot of divine feminines really stuck about finances building a foundation, wondering if they're going to have, you know, this divine masculine to retire with, to grow old with, to have children with, um, really feeling like, am I going to grow old alone? Uh, am I going to age alone? Am I, am I retiring as in singlehood? Am I going to have this happily ever after? I'm going to tell you divine feminines that, I mean, this is my perspective. It's not channeling. So take, Take it for what it's worth. You have to own your empress energy, your yin energy. You have to step into your power and move forward passionately in your own life to have progress and ascension. And you need to be patient with yourself and, and draw in what's intended for you and focus on manifesting your own happily ever after with or without your masculine, because this is limiting if you don't do that. Okay. You're not going to get to the zero point if you're still stuck in this mental prison holding on to dreams and visions of how you thought this was going to go. And because it didn't go exactly the way you thought it was, you put your life on hold or stop living. No, that's crap. That is self-imprisonment. That's victim consciousness. You have to break free from that. You have to be your own rock star. You have to step into your power, your courage. You, you can use this energy of spiritual union with the masculine or date other soulmates or other people that are going to be able to help you fulfill some of these things that you're not getting from the masculine. I'm just saying, okay, don't, don't, don't shoot the fucking messenger. All right, let's see. Let's see what else comes out. Let's get some, uh, energy about the karmic situations. Let's get some energy about the karmic situations. I feel like, did you guys see these images well enough? Cause like they're freaking amazing. Amazing. Cherry did such a beautiful job. You're so gifted, Cherry. All right, let's see. <clears throat> Karmic situation. Karmic situation. Strength, base chakra. So they have a foundation. Whoever has a karmic situation where they've built a foundation, where there's some kind of safety or security that's uh, depended on eight, uh, strength where there's dependence. See the lion and the lioness, like leaning against each other, like leaning on each other for support base chakra, uh, root, root chakra, foundation, security, stability. There's a dependency of stability here, uh, that is, uh, needed or is being used, being used is more what I want to say here, being used for strength in one or both of the uh, people's lives that are part of this karmic partnership or situation. If this is not a person karmic situation, if it's an addiction, family, money, it feels to me like there is strength being built to repair a foundation. This could also be 
uh, somebody having the strength to leave this connection. The strength typically follows the devil uh, in a lot of readings. So I feel like there could be an energy here of whoever has been facing these karmic situations really regaining their strength after a period of being stuck or um, being um, in that bondage situation to somebody where there was codependency or dependency for finances, stability, security, safety. Um, the high priest. Oh, goodness. Okay. So bottom of the deck, grand awakening. This is the judgment card. That's pretty powerful. The high priest, the hierophant. This is a powerful reading. Um, this would indicate that's that, uh, in regards to karmic situations, there's a, a true awakening, a grand awakening judgment that this situation needs to be healed or released Breaking free from traditional structures of marriage, if that's the case, possible leaving marriages. A high priest, it's part of learning the karmic lessons that these situations have brought forth. The high priest is a teacher. It's a highly spiritual energy. It's lessons in, in, in um, being connected to a higher source. It's having faith. It's also a card of marriage and commitment. So depending on your situation or the other person's situation, this feels to me like this could be a marriage that is based on security, stability, uh, dependency, see the strength leaning on each other, um, feels financial because of the base chakra, financial or some kind of stability or security that's been built in a marriage or some kind of commitment with some kind of um, agreement to depend on each other. Grand Awakening may be waking up to the fact that this is not the healthiest situation because Grand Awakening, the Judgment card, is also about second chances and healing. It's oftentimes a card of reconciliation. So either somebody has decided to stay in this karmic situation because it requires them to because they're dependent or somebody else is dependent or they're dependent on each other for finances. There's a legal contract, marriage um, and they realize that they have to heal this before they can leave it, or somebody is choosing to leave it, reconciliation, second chances, because they realize it's compromising their security, their stability, their foundation, and they're gaining the strength to break free from that because of the lessons that have been learned in this karmic situation and moving towards something more spiritual, higher uh, spiritual partnership union, where there's not so much baggage and um, dependency where there, there can be freedom and independence and success on both sides because that karmic dynamic does not exist. Yep. All right. So let's get some union energy and then we will wrap it up. Okay. Union energy. Third eye chakra. What? Hold on. I love this card. Phoenix Rising. Um, Ten of Wands. Coming, bouncing back after a really difficult time. Rebirth. Renewal. Rebirth and victory. Awakening. Third Eye Chakra. An awareness that these difficult times were for a reason. This feminine, there's a clock here. That the cycle has or is being completed of this challenging journey, battle, six of wands, and knowing that the that it's about the rising, it's about the rebirth, the the resurrection of this connection based on the spiritual component, third eye chakra. The intuitive connection that the two partners have together, helping to really mirror this growth and this rising. Mm. House of Cards, the tower. Yikes. So the energy, okay, heart chakra, 
Mm -hmm. Get two more cards for the union energy. Oh, nice. Wow. Okay. Bottom of the deck is mental conflict. Five of swords. So five of swords, mental conflict, the tower, house of cards in this deck. Heart chakra. Third eye chakra. Dark knight of the soul. Ten of swords. Phoenix rising. Ten of wands. The lovers. Look how beautiful the lovers card is. So I really feel with this union energy that this is definitely a time of massive change. Uh, foundations that people thought of as strong, sort of looking at that from a different perspective and realizing that those cycles that they thought, okay, so I'm getting a lot of messages. I'm trying to articulate them all at once here. So let me just step back. It feels to me like people are ready to make choices in regards to love because they want a rebirth. They want a renewal of this connection based on this other energy that came out in the beginning. Zero point, spiritual union, rock star. There's a lot of work being done after many, many tower moments and dark nights of the soul. There's still some clearing energy here and healing energy that's being done intuitively, third eye chakra, to open the heart and feel safe and secure to lean in and give and receive vulnerably the love that is connecting the two of you here. Okay, the, there's, a, there's mental conflict, five of swords. There's an energy here of being confused about whether or not you, there can be a renewal or a union after so much darkness, after so much chaos, things falling apart, conflict. There's mental conflict on how to come forward and to, to help this connection overcome the burdens, Phoenix rising, that is necessary in a divine connection. I like the fact, love the fact, that in the initial energy, the Two of Cups came out, and now in the Union energy, the Lover's card came out. I do feel like this is a desire to come into Union together and to drop the burden and to, re to resurrect this love because it's felt so strongly, energetically, intuitively, psychically, as well as through the heart chakra, that heart activation I was talking about earlier. But I do still feel like in the union energy for whoever I'm channeling here, the tower, house of cards, and the dark knight, there's still some um, reckoning here. There's still some reckoning about <clears throat> whether or not they can be successful in this type of divine love connection, mental conflict, um, win or lose energy, competition, defeat energy, whether they can be successful, really match the partner, whatever side you're watching this from. This could be, I could be talking about you. I could be talking about your partner. I could be talking about both of you because of the mirroring. Whether or not they can live up to this spiritual union energy and really have a new beginning and be successful uh, because of all of the history, because of what's happened in the past. Uh, also really afraid of going through this dark night and house of cards tower moments again. Like, oh my gosh, are we going to repeat history or are we going to have a rebirth and a resurrection of this love in a different way? Third chakra, heart chakra. I do feel like there's an energy here of feeling each other's energy very strongly, really being able to have telepathy and know that both of you are navigating whatever's coming up for each of you. I think there's a lot of mirroring going on here. Uh, it's really about whether or not both sides can overcome what's happened in the past mentally and rebuild the foundation that was destroyed where all the cards fell, came falling down, and face what came up during these um, <clears throat> dark night of the soul kind of energy Tapping into the truth, third eye, 
what this connection really means to each of you, the heart chakra, and using that to propel you to, to rise together in divine timing towards this love. That's what I'm seeing here. It, you know, <clears throat> I just want to, you know, just share with you the only movement energy in this union uh, spread right here is the Phoenix rising, Ten of Wands. It's really not a card of movement. It's a card of closure trying to put the burden down so that you can rise again. It's weighing down and there's a need here to release in order to ascend third eye, release mental conflict, come from a heart centered space, learn the lessons from the dark night to make better choices in love and rebuild the foundation. There's not a lot of movement in the union energy, but there's a strong desire in the beginning of this reading to return to zero point to start over with this spiritual union to be successful. So it feels like there's an intention, a lot of thoughts and energy going into this, the strong desire to navigate what commitment means. That's what came out for the divine masculine and for the divine feminine, cultivating your own happily ever after and being patient while the masculine works through what they need to work through to get comfortable that they're not going to lose their freedom and independence. Um, and they're going to be able to show their love in whatever way they're capable of showing it. Now, for those of you who are going to attack me in the comment section, I'm not telling you to give up your boundaries. I'm not telling you to settle for less than you deserve. I'm not telling you to put up with bullshit. I'm saying have a conversation when it becomes time or think about what you're able to give and receive in regards to commitment because that came out strongly here. This is a really, uh, this reading talks about a whole new beginning in navigating what this connection will look like when and if it moves to be grounded in the physical in 3D union, uh, looking at it differently based on what you both have been through and learned about yourselves and each other and relationships and coming to agreement uh, in how to navigate that. Let's get some final messages. So I know I'm being sort of really straightforward and direct and harsh about what you put in the comments section, but sometimes I'm like, really? Um, you have work to do if you're projecting that kind of crap on me over a general reading that's not even private for you and you're totally twisting the channeling messages that I've put out. So, um, you know, again, I'm very big about healthy boundaries. I'm very big about not settling for less than you deserve. I'm very big about conscious partnerships where both parties discuss their needs and come to an agreement that works for both of you. And if it doesn't work for both of you and you can't settle on that, then it's not the right time or it's not the right connection or it's not going to come into union in this lifetime. And that's it, period. And it's about knowing what's right for you and what you're willing and able to align to. And if it's if this twin flame connection doesn't meet both of your needs when it's time to talk about union and you can't come to agreements and commitment and retain your freedom and independence and be conscious in your connection, whatever that looks like for both of you, then go find a high vibrational soulmate that's going to meet your needs. Mental clarity. It's about knowing what you need and deserve. Ace of Swords. Being awake, being conscious, being aware, knowing what you want, having clarity of your beliefs and your needs, house of cards, so that you can rebuild a foundation and a life that is um, king of no fucks given crew. Oh my God, really? King of, um, king of wands, passionate, fiery, motivated, ambitious, a life that's going to fuel you, that's going to um, you're going to be passionate about, that you're going to love, that's going to motivate you, that's going to keep you high vibrational, seeds of intention, ace of pentacles, building a life, a love, a commitment, a union, or individuality that aligns with what you intend for yourself and what you can align in this connection if it's intended for union. I really feel strongly you have to be clear about just because it's labeled twin flame and it's a soul connection doesn't mean you have to, to settle for less than you deserve. You do need to get into alignment vibrationally, that spiritual union card about what is healthy and conscious and what's going to work for both of you. You may be in a spiritual union, but you're human beings living on this earth and you have to be able to co co habitate or co-create or whatever the case may be. And so there has to be a recognition of boundaries and um, what you need for yourself and coming to agreements and defining what commitment and union looks like for you individually and being able to retain the love for yourself so that you can give love to each other. King of Cups, 
Again, Phoenix rising, putting down the burden of how you've looked at or viewed or entered into love in the past. Love looks differently now because you have worked on your shadows. Things have been illuminated, the moon, and you're moving on from the crap in the past, eight of cups, that kept you in this mental prison. You are free to negotiate commitments, unions, connections at a high vibrational conscious state that allows both of you to be in that zero point and be successful, the rock star, in this union, in the 3D, because you've both done your work and you know what you need and what you deserve and what you want. That's the reading. Sherry, so much love to you. Thank you so much for, again, sharing your gifts and your creativity and your artistry with the world, with the community, for um, being an inspiration to me throughout my journey, especially when I first learned of Twin Flames, for me having videos to watch at 11 p.m. at night and 2 in the morning when I couldn't sleep and I was going through my dark nights of the soul, I'd be praying that Sherry from No Fucks Given Crew would post a video. And I know a lot of you do that with me now, and I learned that from Sherry, and that's why I oftentimes put videos out at night not caring what the view count is or anything like that because it's not a prime time during the day to post or whatever the case may be. I know oftentimes there's people who can't sleep um, who need help in getting out of that stuck place, the chariot. Um, and that's why I put videos out. And I was inspired to do that mainly by Sherry, to be honest with you. She was one of the first ones, Destiny, Wheel of Fortune, to help me see that there, um, there was hope in understanding what this connection was and why it was happening and how I could align with my destiny to heal and grow, evolve, and thrive. I'm sending you all so much love and light. Sherry, much success to you. Blessings to you all. The link for Sherry's cards are in my video summary section and in the comment section. Have a great weekend.